the prodigal son, dishonest steward, unrighteous judge. Hey, what's with all these bad guys? And Jesus telling us they're good guys. Let's find out. During the Lenten season, as you know, every Sunday of Lent has a unique name. Well, what's interesting about it, there's three Sundays that are dedicated to people that otherwise you wouldn't think they should be dedicated to. These three people, the prodigal son, the dishonest steward, and the unrighteous judge are horrible people. Prodigal son, he takes everything his father has given him and he goes and he wastes it. He squanders it. The dishonest steward, he's a thief. Come on, he's a thief. The unrighteous judge could care less about anybody. In fact, it says that he doesn't, he's not even scared of God. Who cares about anything and even God? And yet Jesus uses these three people to bring out the example of goodness and righteousness? Wow. It's interesting that throughout Scripture, when we look at different people, different characters in Scripture, it's interesting that we as people can judge them. But God doesn't use the same standard of judgment. In fact, if you look at the story of Christ, you look at his entire ministry, he's critical of only one thing, and that, that is, is hypocrisy. hypocrisy. People who say they are good, but do other things. And this is one of the things that we have to be careful of as Christians, to realize that we are all sinners. We all have fall into that category of being flawed. We're human beings. And Christ uses these people to instruct us that there is nobody who is without sin. If we look at the prodigal son, he took everything that was given to him and he wasted it. Much like us, who are given all the talents and the goodness that God gives to us and we squander it. How about the dishonest steward? Somebody who is found to be dishonest but figures out a clever way to make friends for himself. Think about it, especially now when you look all around you, it's the wealth that people have that bring in those friends. And Jesus uses this man to teach us something. And finally, there is the unrighteous judge. Jesus uses this man to teach us about prayer. Well, it's interesting that it's only Christ that can transform people. This is really important that we remember this. You know, up on the cross, during those final moments on the cross, what happens there? There is a man that turns to Jesus and says, forgive us. You are here because you did nothing. We are here because we deserve to die. And Jesus turns to him and says, today you will be in paradise. It's interesting. This man on the cross, we don't know if he was baptized, probably didn't live much of a quote unquote Christian life, but he's the only one throughout all of scriptures that is guaranteed a spot in heaven, who's guaranteed a place in paradise. Jesus says, today you will be in paradise. And it's important for us to keep that perspective that that is Jesus's call. That's God's call. Who's good, who's bad. What's up to us is for us to look at these examples and to learn. Christ gives us these people to learn a, a story. And so we invite people during the Lenten season to look at the story of the prodigal son, of the dishonest steward, of the unrighteous judge, and understand by looking at these people, we see transformation. transformation. Not for these characters, they're just part of a parable, but transformation for us. Much like the thief on the cross, who was immediately transferred. We too can be transformed in our own lives from the, the filth and the disgust that is all around us to a paradise where we actualize all of the blessings that God has given us in this life, in this here and now. Very, very important. You know, Jesus is the only one who can make that transformation. Think about it. He says, I am the light of the world about himself. And what does he say afterwards? He says, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine so that people looking at you will give praise and glory to your Father in heaven. You see, Jesus is the only one who can transform. In fact, he, take this, he took the same words that in the Garden of Eden condemned humankind, right? Remember the serpent, the tempter came up and we see that tempted humankind by saying, take and eat. 
What does Jesus do at the Last Supper? He takes the bread and he says, take and eat. Those same words of condemnation, he now changes to words of salvation. And in the same way, Jesus takes these characters and uses them as example. So that in no way we should be ever scared to look at all that life gives us and see that, yes, there are problems in the world. There are difficulties that we face. In fact, we as human beings aren't God. We aren't perfect. But God can change us. He can transform us. So that in that filth, in that sin, in that difficulty, we can find the glory. We can become the lights that are to be put on pedestals and shine for the rest of the world. The Armenian Church invites us to look at these three characters. Otherwise, by today's standards, called horrible people, bad people, but Jesus uses them and makes them heroes. We are invited to become those heroes. We find them in the Gospel of Luke, and so too we follow their stories to find the example of hope, of love, of faith that Jesus Christ promises for all of us. This is how he takes those people and he makes them into heroes for today.